Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, people. So last night, Daniel Dubois fought Kevin Lorena. I mean, that whole card. There's another video. I won't probably do a live today because the England game is on at 7. And I think I'm going out with my friend to watch that. So probably won't do a live till tomorrow. We'll talk about the card more then. We'll obviously get review of the week out for tomorrow as well. But I want to talk about this Daniel Dubois, Kevin Lorraine fight because I really watched it again this morning. And I guess kind of when you watch it back, knowing what's going to happen, you kind of focus a bit more on what actually happened. You know, when I watched it live and I seen the knockdown, I was just like, what? And then seeing how Dubois handled himself after the knockdown and then obviously culminated in a knockout in the third round for Dubois. It was a strange fight. It was a very, very strange fight. I see a lot of people saying fix. Now, I've never really... I know fights do be fixed. Definitely, 100%. I've normally never wanted to go out and flat out say it was. But this one really does look suspicious, doesn't it? Because Dubois going into this fight was a big favourite. A big favourite. And, you know, understandably so. He'd had a, a couple of wins since the Joy, Joe Joyce loss. He picked up a version, a secondary title, a secondary heavyweight title against Trevor Bryan. Looked pretty good doing it. There was talk that he would be fighting Dillian White now. Um, you know, before this fight was announced, obviously. So, with Dubois, it seemed, you know, this was kind of a formality and it would be... I thought Lorraine might mess him around for a bit, but ultimately, Dubois would win. So, to see him go down in the first round... And bear in mind, he took plenty of shots, mainly jabs, to be fair, from Joe Joyce, but never looked close to going down. I wonder, did he have an injury going into Well, apparently he did, but I wonder how bad it was. Because, but again, I wonder, was it more the concussive effect of the shot that put him down, and then maybe it kind of all got on top of Daniel Dubois? Because the way he seemed to just unravel after that knockdown was a worry. Apparently, people were saying that he was saying to Shane McGuigan, or hinting to Shane McGuigan after the first round, that he wanted out. Which again is another big worry. And McGuigan was like, nope, straight back in there. Carl Frampton criticised McGuigan for that. I like Carl Frampton. I have a lot of time for him. But he will never be impartial when it comes to McGuigan. He hates Shane McGuigan and Barry. So when Carl Frampton is saying McGuigan did it, he's not saying that. He's not being objective when he's saying that. He's saying that because he hates McGuigan. He said it before he wouldn't even pee on them if they were on fire. So he doesn't like them. But going back to this fight... Dubois in that first round, it was a strange first round. It was a strange fight because to go talk through it round by round, you had Daniel Dubois getting dropped. I mean, I was going to say against the run of play, but really nothing happened in that first round. Dubois was getting the better of it. And then he takes the knee. And I was thinking, he's done it again. He's, he's going to quit. He's going to quit. He's going to fall mentally. And he almost did. Now, with Dubois... I think with Dubois, a lot of it is mental with him. I don't think he has much heart for battle. You know, Joseph Parker is somewhat similar, but Joseph Parker has no meanness in him. Dubois, Dubois has an element of meanness because he definitely likes to go for knockouts and he likes to, you know, get guys out of there. He's very clinical in finishing, which is something that Joseph Parker isn't. But in terms of having the heart for battle... I don't think he has it. Now, maybe this fight will help him. Maybe it will. Because it seemed that when it got tough in there, he was just pretty quick to say, right, get me out of here. And he didn't. And I think that a lot of fighters will look at Dubois and look at this performance and say, like, Dylan White is a good example. I'd say Dylan White is kicking himself that he didn't fight Dubois last night. I'd say he's kicking himself because I'm sure he's thinking, yeah, this guy can punch. He can punch with the best of them. He's right up there in terms of punching power. But I wouldn't. I can. I hit hard in Lorena. And I would not let him off the hook. If he's going to crumble when Kevin Lorena is, you know, getting, putting pressure on you in the first round, imagine what I'd do. And I think a lot of fighters are going to look at Dubois and think the same. You know, and again, the fact of the matter is, the first round, Dubois was down three times. Two of them were voluntary knockdowns, yes. But he went down with something like 10, 11 seconds more, maybe than that. Maybe it was 12 seconds, but in around that. To go in the first round. And as soon as he's getting to his feet. Clearly 10 seconds left to go in the round. The bell rings. Now that right there is a red flag. You know when you see that. You know that there's something not right. A good example I'll give you. 
of a fight where it was clearly some shenanigans going on behind the scenes in this fight. And it, ironically, the guy they wanted to win didn't win. If you go back to 2016, when Lucas Brown fought Rustin Shigaev over there in Chechnya. Now, Shigaev is very close personal friends with the president of Chechnya. And he actually was in attendance for that fight. And obviously, we know what happened with Brown after it. But in the sixth round, Brown got dropped by a Shigaev left. Dropped heavily. Shigaev, fat cruiserweight, was never in good shape. He put in a lot of energy and effort in that sixth round trying to get Lucas Brown out of there. I think it was a three minute and 30 second round because it went on way after the three minute mark. And then in the seventh round, Shigaev was gassed and Lucas Brown was coming on strong. And there was a good minute to go on that seventh round and the bell went. I mean, that kind of tells you it all. And, and funny enough, Shigaev was never a, able to recover fully. He was never, he was concussed near the end, but in terms of fatigue wise, he really couldn't do anything anymore after that sixth round. He sold out almost. Well, he was always, he was a fat tub of large. That's really what he was. But there's an example of it. And this was this, this was similar to this. Obviously, 10 seconds to go, the, the A side fighter, bell rings, there you go. And down three times in a round, you know. A lot of times the referee will just will call it then. Now, in the second round, this is where I think you got to start asking questions because Kevin Lorraine had just decided to do nothing. He just stopped. Was he? Did he freeze after that first round? Was he afraid because he felt a couple of them jabs and thought, I don't want to get hit with a right hand because these jabs hurt like hell? I really don't know because he really did seem to, to just do nothing. You know, Dubois was there for the taking in that second round. And any other fighter, I think, would have just put it on Dubois and would have got him out of there. I really do. So that's a strange one that Lorraine had just stopped. Didn't do anything in that second round. And then Dubois obviously came back in the third. Whether this fight was fixed or not, I don't know. I'm not making any accusation. just asking the question. Um, obviously, I'm not making an accusation that it was. I don't know. Certainly the bell was a strange one and the, the stoppage as well like at the end of the day like, Lorena was out of it he was to be fair but you let Dubois carry on when the bell rang and the bell rang when Lorena went into the ropes and you stopped it you know I know Lorena was taking more of a punishment but nevertheless you should kind of maybe uh, I don't know that, that's kind of a grey area it's a real grey area with that and Howard Foster we know look Go back and look at Warrington versus Lara. He was the first fight. He was the referee for that. You tell me if Mauricio Lara was in the same type of bother that Josh Warrington was in in that fourth round, he would have let it go on the way he did. He wouldn't have. He was look. He wanted to stop that fight, but I think he was looking and saying, "It's the A fight or it's the house fight. I can't stop it." If that was the other way around, yeah, that fight wouldn't have wouldn't have went after the fourth round. It would have been stopped. But in terms of Dubois moving forward. This is really going to take, he, his stock's going to take a hit in this, I think. But saying that, maybe mentally it's the best thing that can happen to him because it's going to show him that he can actually move on, that he can actually dust himself down, get up off the canvas, come through adversity, come through a crisis and get through it. So maybe it will help him psychologically. But in terms of other fighters, they're going to look at Dubois and thinking, I've got an easy one here. Yeah, you can punch, but if I can avoid those shots, he doesn't move his head at all. Never takes it off center line. If I can land my shots, he's going to unravel pretty damn quick. And I'm sure someone like Dylan White was looking at that thinking, God damn it, I go 12 rounds with Jermaine Franklin. I don't look particularly good. I could have been in there and I would have knocked that kid's head clean off his shoulders. And I'm sure he's kicking himself. He's kicking himself after that. But a very strange fight. Said I'd do a, a video the, the morning after the night before, as Boxing Gossip used to say. And yeah, give my two cents on it. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts below on the performance from Daniel Dubois. What do you think? Do you think this fight may have been, may have been, there may have been a fix in? Certainly there was a few things in this fight that were definitely head scratchers. Definitely. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And what are your thoughts on Dubois moving forward? Leave it all below. I'll talk to you later, people. Smash the like button on the way out. We done well last night. We got 40 plus subs. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Peace.